But when is the first time you heard that the black man is God? Man, that was a beautiful time. I swear I heard it before I met the God Pure Son. That's about that educated. Yeah, in, in Jersey City, right? Um, I heard it in bits and pieces. I knew Farrakhan said that. I heard it in the mix. I heard it in the air. I heard it in the atmosphere. Like you know, like you you see right now, like you gonna hear it. You know what I mean? You gonna hear little little nuances, pieces of God. You gonna hear little nuances that God is. You know, the mm. black man. Mm. You gonna catch glimpses of that. Everybody do. No. Everybody just for, no everybody do now. Yeah, well now it's Think about I grew up in the nineties. I was I was a, a teenager in the nineties, right? And you coming from a Catholic school. But see now nah, I got kicked oh, out of school by this time. Okay. Yeah, I got kicked out of school. So so you how so, old were you when you heard the black man talk? I would say fifteen. Fifteen. But I had glimmers of it at fourteen. I had glimpses of it because I was remember America Online? America, America Online. Online. They gave our CDs to the hood to get all of America Online, right? They right. wanted us to be on the internet that bad. Right, right. And, you know, God's on the internet from the beginning of the internet. And so I remember seeing some brothers, they was from the West Coast, matter of fact, and they were speaking on Supreme Mathematics, and they were the first ones that I've ever seen say the black man is God. And it was right around the time that Wu-Tang was saying in their records. So you were exposed to the black man being God through AOL. Through AOL, through Wu Tang, and through the streets, because I'm hearing it, I'm seeing brothers call themselves God. I'm seeing flags painted on the walls. Like I know, you know what I mean. Like I, I, I'm, I'm getting pieces of it. Okay. But now, okay. when I got to, all right, so I'm hanging out with some of the older heads on the block, and the, the, the. The oldest out of the brothers that would hang out with us was a brother named Pure Son. He was about 29. Mm. And we was all maybe like, I might have been 15. Ram was like 16, 17. Might have, like, we was about 15 to 20. Mm -hmm. and you know what I mean? The age range, right? And he used to come down with his radio, mm. right? And uh, with the beat tape. Mm. You feel me? This is old school. I'm telling you about it. You know, that's his, <laughs> that's his right? hey, hey, beat tape. We used to have to put the tape in and, and replay the beat a few times to get the beat to loop. Like, mm -hmm. this is real old history, right? The loop tapes and whatnot, okay. Yeah, right, right. so, um, and he'd have a book of life sometimes, right? Now, we'd be smoking, drinking, freestyling, you name it. we sitting on milk crates in his little apartment. He provided shelter for us. So, what mm. I didn't realize while I was young was that were he was really keeping us out of trouble. Were you still a runaway at this time, or? I mean, I mean, I, I lived, I mean, I'm, by running away, I mean, I'm running away and coming back. No, no, I know, right, yeah, right, 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 Yeah, right. I'm, I'm still, at this time, I had just, I had just tried my hand at selling coke. Mm. And I ain't like that shit. Shit felt terrible. Right, right, right. It, the shit was easy ass money, but the shit come with a terrible kick to your motherfucking conscience. Because the first time a lady pulled up and brought her kids from school. You got a book you signed, right? Yeah, right here, sign the book. You got a book. No, keep that in the, no, don't even touch it. We're going to leave that, that's important. But I'm going to get to the knowledge on how it really got to me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. sitting up on the sun, I'll see him pull out his book of life. After we get done smoking, we get done drinking. He would be wild. I'm talking about he fighting with his girlfriend. We seen him going through tough times, right? Real tribulation, like real, like you know, shit. A lot of us was dealing with real poverty. Like my family had a little something, but I didn't have no sense of self. Mm -hmm. So that didn't mean nothing to me. I was just willing to die as anybody else. If I ain't had no value in my own life at this mm -hmm. point, so you couldn't separate me from what I was around. You couldn't tell me that I was doing better than anybody else. I figured my life was bound to end before 21. Oh shit! I ain't, this I ain't is what you had in your mind at what, that, 15? Yeah, indeed. Why wow, you gonna you gonna be gone by 21? Indeed, and I had already had brushes with death. I'd already had you know what I mean, a little experience, a little close encounters. You know, I had I had already attempted to kill somebody. I'd already had somebody try to kill me. You know, yeah. that was life. <laughs> Damn. It, like, yeah, I, I lived a rich life, man. I'm thankful for it. You know, I, I've really lived yeah. all the, all the experience that there is to experience. But yeah, just just being able to. And then losing a sense of value for life. I was just building recently, I've come so far, like I've really, like I got a value for life now, like that I didn't have before. And it took me a long, long time to shake it, like to like really grow to like, like not only value in myself, but like I couldn't value others, homie. Like after I seen Trayvon Martin get killed, now that's recently. Right, right, right. After I seen Trayvon Martin get killed, I started thinking a little bit more how I handle my hammer. Mm. Real shit. Now people, now people that know, internet, people don't know me, people that know me, they know that I'm, you know what I mean? I got a certain way about me, like, and you just don't want to offend me in certain ways. Mm. I, I mean, I'm not going to do nothing to nobody that's innocent. No, I don't do that, and I'm not picking on nobody, I'm not no bully. Look, I'm, look, I'm skinny, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But just, please don't do me wrong, you know right, what I mean? Right, right, right. And I, then I had to realize, like, when I seen what happened to Trayvon, I was like, man, Zimmerman just couldn't take an ass with 
right. You feel me? He just couldn't take an ass with me, man. And the motherfucker half Mexican. Or, or something, you know what I mean? And, and what, what, what made me mad about it is, he got nobody, bruh. Zimmerman don't got the, the black people hate him, right? Right. Don't, the Mexicans don't claim him. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to feel about him, but they really not trying to claim him. He don't want to be Mexican or whatever he's supposed to be. And white people don't like him because he's not white. Mm. And he a constant drain, so he's literally like just constantly living to die. That's why every time you hear him in the news, he just sound like a savage. Mm. They literally outcasted him from everything, right? I'm not saying not to give him money now. They give him money, but that's just to spite us. Mm. They give him money so they will report it on our old social media. They gave Zorzman one million dollars. He probably don't even get it. Mm. You hear about where he be going through stuff? He be fighting at the Waffle House. Man, ain't no million they fighting at Waffle House. So you say he's living to die. That's Man, a, look, that dude is. What else he got? Right. What else is, he got? And this is something that you can relate to from what you were going through at what? the time of period. Nah, 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 nah. The reason I bring him up is because I think like, man, that's what it, that's killing don't really, it's killing is hard to live with, mm -hmm. right? And especially if you kill somebody for the wrong reason. Man, look at me, man. If I end up killing somebody just because, what, they, they disrespect me, they do, or they say something I don't like or whatever, or they, or they try me some kind of, really, well, take my car. Give a fuck about that car. I got a family to go home to. You know what I mean? So just be known, you ain't never gonna hear about Supreme Understanding got killed in a robbery. Mm -hmm. You ain't never gonna hear Supreme, Supreme Understanding suicide himself. He took pills and he died, he OD'd. So if that ever happened, a motherfucker kill me. A motherfucker kill me for a goddamn reason. I don't want it to be un... I hate how people act like they confused about Prince. Prince told you how you get down. He don't do all them fucking drugs. Thank so how... Peace, God. Good to see you. Good to see you, God. So how the hell Prince, you not... And you a Prince fan. All these people got Prince tattoos and all they is is freaks. <laughs> that, where you, where you wore your part at? Prince was part revolutionary now. He wasn't just a freak, he was a revolutionary freak. Yeah, well, commercially, he's only known as, you know. Nah, you gotta listen to that music, bro. No, you gotta, you gotta go yeah, deep, you gotta be deep. They got the deep. tattoo, bro, they should know. They should know, bro, they should know a little something. But they, yeah, the, I'm just saying that for everybody. Everybody that claim a movement, claim a wave, they're really not riders for the people that's leaders for them. That's why, God, this man right here, God, like, if you ever see me going through hard times suffering, you wonder why I never put down the flag, and you wonder why I never put down the sword, or why I never stopped doing what I was doing, why I never stopped working, why you never see me. I mean, I might lose steam, you know what I mean? But you ain't never gonna see me turn off. And being on is an obligation because it's an active duty. Right? This is an active duty. We good, God. This, this is a coach right here. This is how it's supposed to look. This is how it's supposed to look. Right, right. This, this is, is how it's supposed to look. If it don't look like this, it ain't the culture. So we're not doing, we're not in the family. No, no, no. But this man right here is who I want to speak on because this man gave his life so that I could be here. Right? It wouldn't be no me without what he gave. And he taught in such a way so that he knew that people was after him. He knew that people would, I'm good, God. He knew that people would be against him, would target him, would want to stop him, would want to kill him. He announced to his own sons, I'm not going to be here next year. Hmm. And he told his own woman, when they're ready for blood, they're going to come. You know what kind of a commitment that is? To be a real martyr? To know when you're going to be taken out? Hmm. I, I know people that did it, but listen, Malcolm's not my, my, the father of my tradition. And if Malcolm is the father of tradition, more power to you. You should have taken care of his grandson, homie. All, right. all, all, all I'm just saying is, this is, my, this is my father right here. And what I'm saying is, I want to make sure that this building stays alive. I want to make sure that this culture stays alive. When this guy that's just walking by so humbly, I had a meet up here because I wanted to bring those that follow me online here so they could see where my knowledge come from so they could know I didn't get this from Tony Robbins or Wayne Dyer you know what I mean? I got this from here but I got it through Pure Sun and through Who Taught Pure Sun because I know my trees hmm. here's a little wiggly branches I gotta connect the branch here or there but I know how I got it and who I got it from so I'm a, I'm a carrier of a tradition If Mega did this